Chapter 1.3 Geometry We start with this chapter with some review of geometry basic formulas including area parameters or area and circumferences for the circles. So let's take a look. Okay, chapter, the first example. If a 10 inch diameter pizza requires 12 ounces of dough, how much dough is needed for a 14 inch pizza? Now, so what we need to find out is just that we're using the same idea of proportion, but in, with area included, with our geometry included. So if you look at the, um, so what we, uh, the way we, I'm going to set this up is I'm going to have area over how much dough you have for the pizza. So on the top, the, uh, the numerator, I have pi r squared. That's the formula for area of a circle. In this case, area of a pizza. And on the other side, same thing. So I have the 5 inch compared to the 7 inch pizza. Well, I'm sorry, 10 inch versus 7 inch pizza. Uh, but since when we, when we talk about 10 inch pizza and 14 inch pizza is really the diameter, so we need to use 5 for radius. Now on the bottom, since the 10 inch pizza used 12 ounce of dough, then how much would it be if we wanted 14, how much dough do we need for the 14 inch, um, inch pizza? So we have the area to area on the top and then the uh, amount of dough, ounce to ounce on the bottom. Once you set up correctly, then you can uh, apply once again, cross multiply, solve for x then that's tell you how much dough you need in this case 23.52 ounce of dough okay now volume is the same thing here's some basic a formula for the volume for um rectangular box versus an, and a cylinder so if you look at this is a similar situation a website says a 48 um 48 50 pound bags of um, sand are needed to fill a sand box. They measure just eight feet by eight feet by one. So it's eight by eight by one uh, sand box. It's a rectangular box. How many bags are needed for a sand box that's six by four by one? So we have the volume on top versus how much sand on the bottom. So when we have an eight by eight by one, we need 48 bags. If you have only six by four by one, how many bags do we need? So again, volumes on top number of bags on the bottom. We cross multiply, you show you, you give us the answer 18 bags. In chapter 1.4, problem solving and estimating. Right, in this chapter, we're applying everything we learned, okay, and uh, so here's the problem solving process. Step, in, step one, identify the question. What is question asking? What do we need? Number two, is work backwards. Find out all the information that we needed or if there's anything missing. Step three, continue working backwards, creating a solution pathway. Step four, if information is missing, look it up or estimate it. If you have unnecessary information, ignore it. Last but not least, solve the problem, follow the solution pathway. So let's take a look at the first example they gave us. The grocery store have a bulk pe um, pecans on sale, which is um, great since the baker is planning on making 10 pecan pies for the wedding. The recipe, here we go, the recipe calls for one and three-fourth cup of pecan per pie. However, in the bulk section, there's only the only scale available, not measuring in cup. So the bakers run over to the baking aisle and find a bag of pecans and look at the nutrition label. Okay, then how many pounds of pecans should a baker purchase? So, well, the first thing we need to figure out is, okay, so we want to know how much pecan we need to buy. So, well, he, he or she wants to bake 10 pecan pies. And each one, the recipe calls for one and three-fourth cups. So let's find out how many cups of pecan we need in total to bake these um, 10 pecan pies. So we take one, three, one and three-fourth times 10 equal to 17.5 cups of pecan. All right, so that's how much we need. Now, if you look at the nutrition facts, it says each bag has one and a half cups of um it's about two servings, right? It's one. It contains one and a half, uh, one and a half cups, a serving size, and then there are two. Ser uh, uh, the serving size is two. So in other words, each bag have one and a half times two. So each bag can uh, has three cups of pecan in it. Well, since we need 17.5 cups, so we take 17.5 divided by three. So the answer is 5.8. So we can really buy 5.8 bag of pecans. So therefore, we need buy a total of six bags to bake our 10 pecan pies. 
Well, here's another example, okay? So if you need to buy some chicken for dinner tonight, you find an ad showing that the store across the town is, it has on sale for $3.09 a pound, which is cheaper than um, your usual neighborhood store, which it sells for three thirty nine a pound. Now, is it worth it for the extra drive? Well, if you think about this question, well, what are some things that we need, okay? Well, number one, how much chicken will you need to buy? Well, so, well, now here's, here we go. Let's answer the question, right? Okay, so these are the questions that's missing. So a good word problem, uh, whatever, if you look at read the original question, it's too much things missing. There's no way you can determine which one is better. If you just simply look at the price, you say, well, 309 is better. But how far is this store, right? How long do I have to drive there? And how much chicken am I making? If I'm just making one pound, is it worth it to save the 30 cents? So here we go. So more information is needed. Okay, that, that's what we mean by working backwards. So if you look at it, we say, okay, a couple of things to consider. Number one, how much chicken will you uh, need to buy? Let's say five pounds. Okay, and number two, how much uh, further, right? Are the, I mean, how much far are the two stores? So we kind of need that information as well. Let's just say, for example, if my neighborhood store is 2.3 miles away and take about seven minutes to get there versus the store that's across the town, which has sale, uh, you know, it's on sale right now, but it's 8.5 miles away. It take about 24 minutes to drive a lot more time and distance to get to it. Now, what else do you need to know? Or what kind of car are you driving? Because we have to think about not only the time, you need to think about, well, how much gas required for you to get there, right? So that, oh, that's also another consideration for you, especially nowadays when if the gas price is high, eh, you really want to think about, is it worth it for me to get out there to, uh, to save 30 cents per pound of chicken, right? Okay, unless I'm, buy, I'm buying a lot of them. So um, so let's say, um, so for number three, it says it's, you know, whatever car you're driving, you average about 25 miles per gallon. Okay, and how many gallons does your car hold? Say fifteen gallons, and how much is the gas? Say the gas is three dollar and fifty nine cents per gallon. Okay, let's just say that's the price. All right, so well, let's see what do we need. The first thing we find out is well, by driving across the town, how much money am I saving on the chicken? So we know that chicken save it's uh, thirty cents per pound. If you decide to use, uh, you need five pounds of chicken for dinner, you will save a total of dollar fifty because three thirty cents times five is dollar fifty. Then, well, and you have to figure out well how far are you driving. So the distance, the difference between the neighborhood store and the store across the town is 6.2 miles extra. Now we use what we learn in proportion. So we know your um the 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 fuel efficiency on your car is 20 my uh 25 miles per gallon. So every gallon can drive you 25 miles. Now if I need to drive 6.2 miles, how many gallons is that translating? So if you set it up, we have miles on top, gallons on the bottom, cross multiply. You tell us that okay with my car right which can drive 25 miles per gallon, it will cost 0 0.248 gallons of gas to drive 6.2 miles to um, to get to the um, to the the further store okay now the, how much is that going to cost me so since each each uh, gas is cost 359 per gallon now how much dollar X is a dollar amount we don't know but we know we need to drive 0 0.24 a gallon once again we use proportion dollar to dollar and gallons on the bottom we cross multiply find out okay to drive that extra it cost me 89 cents so you do end up saving because if you go back to number one, you remember that you save dollar fifty on a chicken, but um, but you you will cost you eighty nine cent more on a gas to get there. So you do end up if you subtract the two, you do end up saving sixty one cents um total. However, is it worth seventeen minutes more traveling time? Most of us probably say no.